Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome to the channel. Today we are going to react to True Crime TikTok compilation videos. So get on your forensic gloves out, put them on, because we about to solve or watch some true crimes. I don't know why I did that with my hands, but yes, let's watch. Okay, so are we gonna die in eight minutes? Okay, so the sun may have exploded and we wouldn't even know it for at least eight minutes. Light from the sun takes eight minutes and 20 seconds to hit Earth. Meaning if the sun suddenly blew up, we actually wouldn't know for that period of time. This is because light travels faster than anything else and we wouldn't be able to hear an explosion from space. While this can cause a lot of anxiety, our sun would never explode. It doesn't have enough mass to create a supernova. A star needs to have a mass of 10 times that of our sun in order for it to explode. If the sun were to explode, it would take around 134 days for the shock wave to reach Earth. But the neutrinos and radiation travel at the speed of light and would reach us in 8 minutes and we would all die. So realistically, we can all die in 8 minutes at any given time in our life. Because we would have no idea that the sun exploded in that time. This is extremely scary, not only because we would all die, but because it's completely out of anyone's control. In the vast reaches of space, time is different over there. If something happens like that, we're going to be over in an instant, so... I don't know if it's 8 minutes. I don't know if that's correct or accurate. But, you know, we could die instantly at any time. We won't know it. Unless we create a super shield around the world. That can block us from everything. Asteroids. Shockwaves from the sun. A black hole. Something. But uh, I have yet to see that. So a lot, of, a little morbid. A little morbid. Let's go to the next one. Mother took a selfie with my head while I was pregnant just because I got married. My name is Kirti Thoris and I'm a young Indian girl in 2021 when this happens. While I was working with my mother-in-law in the fields, my mother and brother came to visit me. Momentarily abandoning my chores, I went into the kitchen to make some tea. Then my brother suddenly appeared from behind, using a sickle to me. My husband, sleeping upstairs, was awakened by the sound of utensils falling to the floor. Going into the living room, my mother tried to kill him, but he managed to escape. Later, my brother came out of the house, holding my head in his hand, and took a macabre selfie. Then he went to the police station. You might ask what motivated such violence. Shortly before this tragedy, I had entered into a marriage without my parents' consent. My father, named Sanjay, was deeply offended by this marriage, considering my choice of companion too modest. It was he who ordered my death, believing that I had tarnished the family honor. Uh, usually if you're, especially in countries like those, if you're gonna, you're gonna marry outside of an arranged marriage already from your family or something, someone's gonna get upset. And it's sad because things like this can happen and it's a really messed up way to die. And there was no why there was no point. It's like you're already pouring salt into the wound. Karma is a karma is a bee. I don't know if this case is real, but it's really saddening and really messed up. Never drink Dasani water again. And here's why. OK, so Dasani is considered the worst water bottle by millions of people. And many people come to this conclusion before even knowing this about it. And what I'm about to tell you is going to make you never drink Dasani water again. Dasani water has potassium chloride in it, which is the same chemical given to a death row inmate during a lethal injection. And it causes cardiac arrest and death in just minutes. If you don't believe me, just look at the back of any Dasani bottle, and it literally says potassium chloride. Dasani water also has magnesium sulfite and salt in it, which makes no sense because why does water have an ingredient section on the back? It's literally just water. The chemicals in Dasani water also makes the person drinking it more thirsty, so you drink more of it. I don't know what Dasani water is doing, but water is just water and it should be just water. I don't know why they're adding all these different chemicals to it, but something just seems weird. And this is why I'm never drinking Dasani water again. I agree to a point that water should be watered. Um, there's also things that filter the water. I wouldn't personally drink from Dasani, Nestle, and companies like that because 
They have been sued numerous times. Um, the water, for one, does not taste great. So yes, everyone should do their research on ingredients or is on the nutrition label whatsoever. But yes, don't drink Arrowhead. Don't drink Dasani. Don't drink Nestle. Uh, but if you got to drink water and you're out of options, I don't know what to say. If that's your only option, that's fine. But strive for better. Ask for better. Demand better. Don't drink Dasani. I became blind and gained over 220 pounds after overdosing on Red Bull. My name is Lena Lupari, and I was 26 years old in 2015 when these events occurred. I am a mother of three children and thought Red Bull was giving me energy, so I used to drink about 28 cans a day. This added over 3,000 calories to my already high fat and sugar diet which logically started to make me gain a lot of weight. In addition to weight gain, that be it. I was spending more than a quarter of my monthly income to buy enough Red Bull. But I continued to consume it excessively and very quickly I had severe headaches until one day, in June 2015, I was unable to get out of bed due to migraines and especially because I was beginning to lose my sight. I was hospitalized and the doctors noted that my excessive Red Bull consumption led to significant weight gain and a rare condition called idiopathic intracranial hypertension, which caused my brain to swell. This caused severe headaches, migraines, and vision loss. Red Bull has changed my life, and I will never be able to properly take care of my three children again. Yeah, energy drinks on the daily like that, it's going to have a bad outcome. Especially because it has so much sugar, that monster, anything, any of those energy drinks that it just has that major consumption of sugar just is not good for you so don't drink energy drinks kids drink water drink dasani no, i'm just kidding i became paralyzed after smelling a bottle of cabra pepper my name is thais medeiros from now on be very careful when you smell a bottle of chili because it changed my life forever i was 25 and bursting with joy and vitality i was at my boyfriend's house and we were planning to have lunch together as we were cooking I picked up a bottle of chili, and without thinking too hard, I smelled it. A normal gesture for many people. However, what nobody knew at the time was that I was suffering from respiratory problems. In fact, I'd had an attack the very same day. Within minutes, my body reacted violently to the smell of chili pepper. I started to feel an unbearable itch in my throat, and suddenly lost consciousness. It all happened so fast. My boyfriend and family rushed me to hospital, but my brain had already been without oxygen for more than eight minutes. The seizure was so violent that it caused cardiac arrest and cerebral edema. I fell into a coma for several days. When I woke up, I had lost all mobility in my body. The doctors think I'll never get my old life back. You imagine just randomly just smelling your favorite food and then boom, lose all mobility. You can't live the same life. How greatly devastating would that be to know that that might have been your your last moment before everything was stripped out of you? That is insane. These are photos that aren't what they seem, part one. Up first is this picture, and at first glance, it looks like nothing. But if you look at it again, it literally looks like bodies being dragged into hell. Mm -hmm. This is absolutely disturbing when you see it, and I kind of wish I could unsee it. Next up is a picture of four new planets that we just found. And look at how stunning they are. No, I'm just kidding. These aren't planets at all. They're actually all just the bottom of frying pans. <laughs> but it's actually insane how much these look like planets. You can show this picture to anybody and I guarantee the first thing that comes to their head is planets. Yeah. Next up is a picture of a man that is completely invisible. And this picture has been a mystery ever since it went viral. But I hate to break it to you, this man isn't invisible at all. His jeans are just the same color as the water behind him, and he's blending in perfectly. Wow. Finally, we have all seen alligators in water at some point in our lives. And you probably think nothing of it and just assume that they're floating in the water. But what if I told you every time you see an alligator floating in water, they're actually standing underneath the water, and this is what they look like. That's crazy. This is kind of funny, and I can't believe this is what they do. <laughs> that last slide got me. Do they, do they really do that? <laughs> That's pretty funny. That that uh guy with the jeans blending in. Oh, that was trippy. Some kind of invisibility cloak right there, right there. 
yeah, that uh, molten lava or whatever it was, uh, it really did look like dead bodies going into hell or something. The frying pans, they, they actually, he got me. They actually do look like uh, planets. Very, very cool. I found my daughter, who was presumed dead six years ago at a birthday party. My name is Luz Cuevas, and in 1997, my house was destroyed in a fire. During the fire, I managed to escape with two of my daughters, but my third daughter, 10 days old and named Delamar, was nowhere to be found. I rushed back in, checked her crib, but she was not there. The firefighters quickly confirmed that she had died and had been completely consumed by the fire, but I refused to believe it. But in January 2004, one of my daughters was invited to a birthday party, so we went. Strangely, one of the little girls there resembled my two daughters, so I quickly thought it could be Delamar. I discreetly took a hair from this girl, whom I thought was mine, and did a DNA test, and I was right, it was her. The investigation then revealed that a certain Carolyn Correa had intentionally caused a fire at my house and had kidnapped my daughter. Since her own baby had been stillborn, she may have suffered a mental breakdown, leading her to believe that Delamar was her child. She raised Delimar under the name Aaliyah for six years, leading everyone around her, including her boyfriend, to believe the child was hers. She was then sentenced to 30 years in prison for kidnapping and arson. What? This lady kidnapped this other lady's daughter, set her house aflame, and raised her child. Man. That's why you always gotta have someone, especially at hospitals too. This reminds me of uh, those other story cases where people will literally uh, switch your baby and you could end up raising somebody else's child or just in general someone will kidnap your child back in the day i think they used to do that i don't think it's you can easily do that now you know i'm glad the mom did that she went with her instinct and she was right it was her kid and that other lady got what she deserved but still that's that's a plot twist these are pictures taken before it all went wrong part two up first is this photo. This is the last known image of pregnant woman Shannon Watts. Just a few hours later, she as well as her two daughters who were three and four years old would be dead, <clears throat> murdered by her husband Chris Watts Also, he could start a new life with the woman he was cheating on her with. This is just chilling and Netflix actually has a documentary about this case. Ooh, Up next is it. this photo. A couple is posing in front of Niagara Falls for a picture, but if you look behind them, the woman in red whose woman is a Yana Takumasu, a Japanese exchange student. And shortly after this picture was taken, she lost her footing and gets swept away to her death. Wow. This is just disturbing because we are literally looking at this girl's final seconds of living. Finally is a picture of a happy couple about to go hiking, but they have no idea what's about to happen to them. Their names are Molly LaRue and Gio Off Hood. They were getting their photo taken before hiking the Appalachian Trail, but little did they know this was the last photo they would ever take together. Because shortly after this photo was taken, they were murdered by a wanted man named Paul David Cruz. This is just so sad because look how happy they look. Yeah. Wow, those hikers. They were so happy in that photo. It just goes to show you anything can happen. So live your life to the fullest. Do whatever you want. Let nobody stop you. Do it all within the boundaries of course i'm not telling you to go do some crazy never mind i don't know where that started but, but yes live your life to the fullest some of the names mentioned in the oh, jeffrey yes. epstein documents that were just released today are crazy so let's take a look at a few things we learned today first of all there's some seeming confirmation on the fact that stephen hawking was enjoying some illicit activities with jeffrey epstein as you can see right here, this is an email from Jeffrey Epstein to Ghislaine Maxwell. It says, you can issue a reward to any of Virginia's friends, acquaintances, family that come forward and help prove her allegations are false. The strongest is the Clinton dinner and the new version in the Virgin Islands that Stephen Hawking participated in an underage orgy. Now, I don't know why they would be scrambling to find someone who could deny this if it didn't actually happen, but I don't know, that just sticks out to me. There's also some doubling down on the accusations against Prince Andrew. We knew these were true already. He obviously did this, but in these documents, it just spells out exactly what happened, who was, you know, flown to meet Prince Andrew and where. Then you have some really creepy stuff about Bill Clinton that came out. 
the documents literally show that they were asked, did Jeffrey ever talk to you about Bill Clinton? And it was answered, he said one time that Clinton likes them young, referring to girls. Obviously, there were hundreds of pages of information that were released today, so I'm sure more people are going to find more concerning things in them. But I just want to state that, I, obviously, I think that all of this has already been washed, so we're never even going to find out a glimmer of the real truth. But I do think at least this is a step in the right direction. Yes, I've been waiting for someone someone to speak about this, these Epstein file things. So, first of all, I read something entirely different for the Stephen Stephen Hawking thing. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know if I should say it, but basically, quote unquote, it said that he liked watching small people doing things. So I don't know about what was explained in that video about the underage girls, but maybe it is true. But I have to read up on um, more about it. Bill Clinton's always been. You know, he likes them young. He's always been like that. Take a look at Monica, you know. Come on. That's nothing new. We already knew all this. But yeah, I, I uh, definitely do think this is a right step in the right direction. Let's just see what what else happens and what else gets released. And we'll stay tuned. The true story behind this mugshot is absolutely disturbing. This is 54-year-old Stanton Lee Pierce. And in 2017, he was sentenced to 40 years in prison for burning a body. So Stanton had been in and out of prison in the past, but in 2016, he got mixed up in a murder. These were the three people that were implicated in this murder scheme. There was 37-year-old Rebecca Bond, pictured over here, who actually shot and killed the 62-year-old victim, Louise Martinez. Then there was 56-year-old Lori Stone Perry and Stanton Pierce, and these two were convicted of moving the body. 62-year-old Luis Martinez had been missing for a while, and eventually investigators located his burned prize vehicle out in the middle of nowhere. And when I say out in the middle of nowhere, his burned car was really way out in the middle of nowhere in the woods. Obviously, they knew something had happened to Luis, but they didn't know exactly what had happened. Well, Luis's body was eventually found also burned in a local cemetery, and from that point on, investigators knew that they were looking at a hardcore murder. Eventually, through investigation, investigators were able to determine that Stanton Pierce had helped clean up the crime scene and had helped move the body to that cemetery. He had collected shell casings after the victim was shot and killed, he had removed bullets from a wall that had gotten lodged in there, and he had even cleaned up blood from the surrounding area. And to finish the story out, Stanton Pierce was sentenced to 40 years in prison. He's going to be over 90 years old when he's finally released. He actually looked like the... A potato head gone wrong from Toy Story, if you guys all know what I'm talking about. I'm glad they got caught. It's a really weird, grotesque face that that guy had, and I'm glad they got caught. Well, all right, guys, that is the end of the video. I hope that you guys enjoyed these little short reaction videos that I'm making from now on. I just wish I could sit here for a long periods of time, but duty calls and, uh, we gotta go. So with all that being said, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. That way we can beat this algorithm together. And we can keep the lights on here and we can keep reacting to videos and so on and so forth. Thank you guys so much for watching again. And I will see you on the next one. Peace. Also, if you guys like these type of videos, watch these two. There's more true crimes to be solved.